Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I know you've been waiting. You've been waiting. You're so good. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Uh, Lina xin mến chào quý vị. Quý vị khỏe không? Ooh, it was a hot weekend here. Trước hết, Lina xin lỗi là thứ sáu vừa rồi không có đăng bài là tại vì quá bận rộn với cái uh, cái buổi uh, tiệc gây quỹ. Nhưng mà, oh, it was so it was so nice. It was a lot of work, but it was wonderful. Thì Lina cũng báo cho quý vị biết và quý vị mừng uh, cho Lina là buổi gây, uh, gây quỹ rất là thành công. Rất là nhiều người Việt Nam, uh, họ, họ giỏi, họ successful và họ tới chia sẻ. So I am so happy and I can't wait to go back to Vietnam in three weeks. Three weeks, everybody. Okay. Are you guys ready for tonight's talk? Nếu mà quý vị đang ở Việt Nam đó, I want to see one. If you are, um, oh, no, no, no. If you're watching from the United States, one. If you're watching from Vietnam, I want to see two. If you're from Australia, I want to see three. Okay? And then anywhere else, you can tell me where you are. So hôm nay Lina có hai người bạn trẻ uh, to talk about a very uh, important Uh, issue. Sao cái camera nó nó bị oh boy. Sorry. Um, and one of my guests was born in California. Okay. Uh, then the program will probably be mostly English, which is good for you because you get to practice your listening skills. And I know many of you are from the United States, so I hope uh, I hope you'll enjoy the program and be able to understand most of it. Alina uh, thấy số một nhiều. Okay, very good. Here we go. I'm going to introduce my guests tonight. I am so impressed by them. They're young, they're smart, they're successful, and I think they're really brave. They're really brave because they're willing to talk about things that people are a little, mm, they think it's too taboo to talk about, especially in the Vietnamese community. Uh, so I am so happy that they agreed to talk to me tonight. Uh, our first guest is um, Angela Minh Tu Nguyen. She goes by Thu. She was born and raised in Little Saigon in Orange County, California. She's an associate professor of psychology at California State University Fullerton. She earned a PhD from UC Riverside, a master's from CSU Long Beach, a bachelor's from the University of San Diego. And in her spare time, I don't know how she has spare time, But in her spare time, she likes bike rides and hikes with her wife and her children. She also serves as board secretary of Viet Rainbow of Orange County. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thu, hello. How are you? Oh, good, thanks. Hello, Jack. <laughs> you deserve applause. Very Thank nice. Lina. Và chào uh, các anh chị em, uh, anh chị chân em đang đón xem. Um, I'm very happy to be here and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk about những vấn đề liên quan với người LGBTQ trong cộng đồng Việt Nam. Very nice. Thank you. And then uh, I'm going to give him applause right now and bring him on. Okay, I'm going to bring him on right now. Oops, where is he? Where is he? Oh, this is James, everybody. Say hi to James. <laughs> James Huynh. Okay, let me tell you about James. There we are. <clears throat> James, also very impressive. He's the son of Vietnamese refugees uh, from the city of Hue. Ah, người Minh Trung nữa, ha? Huh? He grew up in Fontana, California. Uh, James is a PhD student in community health, uh, community health sciences in the Fielding School of Public Health at UCLA. Now, before graduate school, James was a Fulbright Fellow in Vietnam. He earned his master's in Asian American studies and master in public health and community health sciences from UCLA 
and a bachelor's in human biology from Stanford University. James is uh, also serving as a board chair for the Viet Rainbow of Orange County. James, you want to say hi to our audience? Hi, everyone. It's so nice to meet you. Xin chào quý vị. Then Amlet, James Huynh. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I've been a big fan of Jilina since I was a kid. <laughs> I used to watch you on the news with my grandparents. And so this is a, a really big honor. Well, that's a good way to make me feel old. You used to watch <laughs> with your grandparents? Uh, very nice. I love it. Okay. So hôm nay mình sẽ nói về những cái vấn đề mà nếu mà dịch ra tiếng Việt là, là chị không có dịch nổi là tại vì I, I just don't know the words. And even if even when you do know the words, it's still kind of difficult to talk about, right? Even in American society, not everyone is open about issues concerning the LGBTQ community. So first, thank you both for, for coming on here and, and wanting to talk about this. So can I ask you just to tell me a little bit about kind of your personal life? Um, Thu, you said that uh, you're married, uh, your wife, and you have kids. Can you tell me about your family life? Sure, of course. Um, my my wife and I have been together 23 years, um, and we have three kids. Um, um, the oldest one, so con đầu lòng nó mất trước khi nó được thôi nôi. So, nếu mà nó còn sống thì nó năm nay gần chín tuổi. And then I have twins, um, uh, six years old, six years old, and um, they also. Um, belong to the LGBTQ um, community, and I can talk, share a little bit more about that later. Okay. And James, how about you? Yeah, so I um, identify as a gay, queer man. Um, I came out to my family when I was in college, um, and I currently live with my partner um, here in L.A., uh, we don't have kids yet. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to get out of this PhD program. And so <laughs> afterwards, we're thinking about adopting. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that for now. Nice. Nice. Um, can you talk about coming out to your family? Because uh, I have a lot of gay friends and it's not always easy. And I imagine it might be harder when you're from a conservative culture like like Vietnam, right? Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I can start off. Um, my coming out wasn't of my own choosing necessarily. Uh, and so, but it was also not like a horror story um, that I was so used to hearing about growing up. Um, and so what happened was uh, in college, I was dating someone at the time and for the holidays, we made, you know, holiday cards to send to our friends. Um, and on one of one of the pictures on the card was a picture of us kissing. Um, and stupid me, when I left back to Stanford, um, I accidentally left some of those cards in my room. So when I came back home for spring break, I saw that these cards were neatly stacked on my nightstand. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and so at dinner time, my mom asked me a series of questions. She first asked, you know, oh, do you have a girlfriend yet? And I said, no, I have to study, which I think was a really great excuse back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then she goes, do you like girls? And I remember my heart beating really fast when that happened. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew in that moment was like when we had to have this conversation. Um, and so I said, no, I don't. Um, and she was like, but you had girlfriends in high school. What, what did they do to you? I'm like, they didn't do yeah. anything. Um, it's no one's fault. Like, this is just who I am. And I remember my dad, the first thing he said to me was, oh, as if like being gay <laughs> right. was a mental illness. Yeah. And in that moment, I think I had to really steal myself and remember that my parents are people who are growing and learning every day too not just me and so in that moment I had to really remember that I think to feel compassion and be compassionate and not just I think 
feel hurt at that kind of comment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I explained, no, like, this is not a mental illness. This is just who I am. And my younger sister was crying. She already knew. I had come out to her a long time ago. And she was like, I can't believe you two would say this to James. Um, like, if I had kids, I would accept them no matter what. Uh, so I was really um, happy and proud of her defending me. Uh, but then my mom said something that I did not expect in response to my sister. My mom said, oh, of course we love James. I, we just don't understand. And I think for me, that could have been the best outcome at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, that was in 2013. Um, since then, um, I feel like our, my relationship with my parents has really blossomed. Um, I think what really helped was when I joined Viet Rainbow of Orange County or VROC, um, VROC is this intergenerational group of Vietnamese folks, queer youth, queer older people. Um, but we also have a really strong contingent of moms, like straight moms who have their own queer biological children, but they come and they kind of act as mother figures for all of the queer youth in the group too. And once I joined VROC, I introduced my parents to the moms. And I think it was really powerful for my parents to be in a group of other Vietnamese parents who also speak Ding Viet and mm -hmm. can understand their struggle in learning this new thing. Um, and I think because of that, I've been able to really be my authentic self with my parents. Um, and, you know, I think seeing these moms and my parents, I really pushed back on the notion that Vietnamese culture is inherently like conservative or whatever. I think there's actually this really long tradition of being socially forward. Um, and I think it's like these groups of people doing it, like maybe they're not super well known, but, um, I think it's just been really powerful for me to witness, um, and so, yeah, I, I feel like I have a really beautiful relationship with my parents now. Mm -hmm. We, like, they see my partner and me all the time for dinner. They bring us food from Orange County. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And so That's really I'm nice. really happy about it. Can I ask you, um, when you had this conversation with your parents, was it in Vietnamese or English? It was in Vietnamese. It yeah. was? It was. I, my, I pepper my Vietnamese with English. Yeah, um, well, we all do, right? <laughs> Nhưng mà... Did you know, like, did you have the, did you have the tools to be able to have that conversation in Vietnamese? Like, vì nếu mà bây giờ mà nói, nếu mà bây giờ mà, mà chị nói chuyện với, với ba má của chị, mà nói về cái việc này thôi cũng, I don't know what words to use. Mà mm -hmm. khi đó James biết không? Biết khi đó James biết không? Không. Không biết. Điểm chị biết là, ơ, điểm chị. Trời ơi, nói tầng Huệ nghe dễ thứ trời á. Wow. <cười> Nhưng mà nếu như vậy thì khi mà em nói chuyện về về ba mã đó thì làm sao mà I mean how I, I, what, what do you say? Nên nếu, nếu mà khi đó mà không có biết những cái từ như vậy thì em nói sao? Em chị nói, you know, em chị thích uh, boys. That's literally how I said it. Em chị thích uh -huh. boys. Um, uh, cái, cái này không phải là em không có bị bên. When my dad said, you know, không đi bác sĩ. Um, so it was, it was a mix. It was, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was also really. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I that's a, that I am that is amazing. I really I I have a lot of respect for you to be able to do that. And I really have a lot of respect for your parents to grow. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't, you know, we need to give them credit cuz that's pretty amazing. Okay. Uh awesome. Okay, Thu, how about you? I mean, uh, how did your I'm assuming your your parents and your family and friends know. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm pretty much out in all aspects of my life. And if I'm not yet, this life stream has do it. helped confirm it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So it wasn't the Viet part that made my me hesitant to talk to my parents. It was actually the Gong Zhao part, the Catholic part. Ah, uh, yeah. And so my family is uber Catholic. Um, so my bên mà nội đó, my my aunts are all nuns. They be tu. Bên ngoài đó thì ông ngoại là chủ tịch của cộng đồng, uh, like cộng đoàn công giáo. So like the like director of the church. Mm. So um, very, very Catholic. I used to teach catechism. So Sunday school, um, my aunt taught catechism, like very, very Catholic. And so I think that was probably my biggest hesitation. Um, but I actually, you know, I, I think when it came to coming out, I I want to actually mention that like when we think about coming out, we think of like the American way of coming out, like the white way of coming out, like, hi, I'm gay, you know, like, <laughs> that's who I am. Um, and for so many others of us, especially like, you know, Asian Americans, we, we do it in other ways. And so for me, I actually never really had the, the need to come out to. So um, I'll back up a little bit. Um, uh, my sexual orientation is, um, I guess you can call it sangtin or tuantin, so bisexual or pansexual. And so I see I'm attracted to a person and I don't. I'm not attracted to a specific gender. It's kind of like all genders. So um, that's that's how that works with me. Um, and so I never really felt the need to tell people that. But what I wanted to come out, out was about my partner, right? this very important person in my life that I wanted to share with my family and let them know that, you know, this, this person completes me. This person is a part of my life. Um, and so... Um, I just started taking her to family functions, right? Oh. Took, took her to enough family functions and people just expected her. And like, people are like, oh, say, you know, if sometimes she doesn't come, she's like, oh, what happened? You know, where is she? And they ask about her. Mm. Um, in my family, probably one of the most important people to me is my Bangwai. So she, she raised me, she cared for me. We have a very special relationship. And she's also one of the most Catholic people in my family. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was very nervous about how she'd respond. Um, and so um, my wife is also a college professor. And when we're applying for jobs, university jobs, my, my grandma was like, I really hope that you find jobs near each other so you don't have to drive so far. Oh. And I was just like, oh, so she, like, she really knows. And she's totally cool with that. And she's wishing, like, she's giving her blessings, wow. you know. Um, and then, you know, I think when we, so nine years ago, when we had our first child, everyone's like, okay, so this is like real, like, you know, you're, you're together, you have a family. Um, they call you, you know, my, my firstborn called us both moms. Um, and so surprisingly, all my aunts and uncles are, ha are good with it. My, um, even like the most religious of them. And so it's, it's much more positive than I expected. Um, there's only one person who has not been accepting and that's my mom. And so the most important person in my family. And so that's really um, hurtful um, and sad, but it's also not from a place of hatred. So she is so Catholic and she loves me so much that she's more concerned about my life after death, mm. right? My happiness after death. And so she just wants me to have a good life then because life on earth is like temporary. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's probably the part that I'm most sad about, but it's been fairly positive um, for the rest of my family. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, can I ask uh, both of you whether whether you know, do you think that the Vietnamese are more accepting of lesbian relationships versus gay relationships? Is there any kind of difference to, to your knowledge? Just, you know. Either of you? I don't know. I, you know we're both researchers, heard... and so we're scared to, like, make a statement about facts, too. <laughs> um, I can see that, like, maybe with men, like, with masculinity, it's harder to accept certain things. Mm -hmm. But I, I truly, I truly don't know. I feel like it really depends on the context um yeah it's kind of hard to mm. to make a statement about that i can um, answer as a researcher oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> so in in according to research the cultures where that i whichever uh, i'm talking about binary gender whatever gender has um more strict guidelines 
right? Like men have to be masculine or women have to be really feminine, right? So I think in that culture, it's it's more important to like for a man to be masculine, right? And so mm-hmm. whatever gender that is, they have a harder time um, accepting homosexuality for that gender. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So yeah. if men have strict stricter gender roles than women, then um, gay men are less accepted than lesbian women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. That's that. That's what I. Uh, uh, I mean, no real knowledge. I just assume uh, for that very reason. Uh, I wanted to show this comment. Um, Chase Wynn says, um, "James nói với uh, ba mẹ là James thích boys." Còn uh, mình thì mình nói với ba mẹ là, là mình không thích con gái, mình chỉ thích men thôi. So everyone has a different way of, of, uh, of saying it. And I am, I'm just so impressed. Um, I can tell you that I do have a, a friend who, you know, like we, we all just kind of knew she was lesbian, but, you know, she had boyfriends. Nhưng mà we just, we kind of just knew and we really just wanted her to be happy. And we felt like, gosh, we wish she would just face it. You know what I mean? Just be comfortable with it. Uh, now she is. But she went through a time period where her family didn't want her around and uh, didn't want her girlfriend around. And at first, the she the um, you know, family gathering, she did một mình. And then after a while, she cảm thấy là is an important part of her life. Tại sao mình phải làm như vậy? Uh-huh. Thì khi đó là she mới nói với gia đình là this is, this is who I love. So if you don't accept her, then you don't accept me. And then so maybe I just won't come to family gatherings. And I think sometimes people do need to take a stand like that before their family members can see the love, can see, you know, how much it means, you know, to their sister or their, uh, their, their daughter. And so um, now, oh my gosh, you know, now she goes golfing with her brother and her girlfriend and they go to family gatherings and they hỏi thăm and she's changed. You know, cái hạnh phúc của mình nó, nó, no, ảnh hưởng đến cái sức khỏe của mình nữa. I mean, she's happier person. She just, she's lovely. And, and I, I love to see that. Um, what would you say then is one of the challenges that, um, that we still have, especially within the Vietnamese community, when it comes to LGBTQ issues? Is there anything that, stands out to you james you're saying i hope you're saying yes <laughs> yes <laughs> um i mean I, I i think that family dynamics are still really hard um like for example in uh, hoi v rock we have a summer youth program uh where lgbtq youth from orange county uh come and do leadership development with us and sometimes and it's all over zoom Um, And sometimes some of the youth are literally Zooming from their closet Mm. because um, they're not comfortable sharing that part of themselves with their family yet um, for whatever reason. And so I think home life can be really hard, especially when you're in high school, you don't have that like financial independence yet. You know, you don't have certain resources to create, um, the type of environment you want to be living in. Um, And so something that is really popular in a lot of LGBTQ communities is this concept of chosen family, um, which is what a lot of my research is about, like not just sticking to your biological, your family of origin, but really choosing the people in your life that you want to have these intimate bonds and relationships with um, and who you want to be obligated to um because a lot of times people like in your uh, story Jelena like sometimes people have to make a stand and sometimes when they make that stand it means they have to leave their family of origin um and so i think you know there's still a lot of like misunderstanding about 
what being LGBTQ is. Um, like one of my aunts, for example, uh, was really resistant about my cousin living with other queer people because she thought, oh, Gabi Lai Bin come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, that, it doesn't mm-hmm. work like that. <laughs> right. um, so I think there's a lot of like misunderstanding still to be combated. Um, and at the same time, there's also a lot of really great work that's being done where people are creating their own families that they need need and want to have. Um, but I think language is really, really important, like actually being able to explain, you know, a lot of this in thing to folks, mm-hmm. um, not just the words, but like the, the meaning behind it too. And, and also how important it is for us to just live our lives. Um, like if we can just live it the way we want, people will be so happy. <laughs> yeah. Lou, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I think a lot of it just comes from uh, the challenge is would be just misinformation. Um, so, you know, I say it was fair. My coming out process was fairly positive, but a lot of the the comments, the questions I got um, from family and friends were some of them were offensive, some of them were insensitive, but again, not maliciously so. Right. So they didn't intend to be, but they asked questions um, that that indicated that they're not quite sure what's going on. So for example, um, when I was pregnant with my first child, I had family members ask, so who did you sleep with to get pregnant? And I'm like, well, that's that's not quite how it works. You know, it's not like I just choose a random guy on the street to sleep with, right? right? Um, and so comments like that. So I think um, a lot of, um, it, it, there's more education on the part of everybody, like, you know, um, cis head people, so cisgender, um, heterosexual people taking it upon themselves to learn about issues commu- concerning our communities um, so that they're, they're just aware, right? Mm-hmm. Um, being more inclusive in our language so that people feel accepted, right? So again, with my first child, someone had mentioned to, to him, oh, you're going to grow up to be such a ladies' man. Um, assuming that the baby would grow up to to identify as male and then to be heterosexual, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so I said earlier that my kids, so my kids, my twins are gender expansive. And so they full on reject the notion of gender and especially binary gender. And they're like, why box ourselves in? Why do we have to choose being a boy or a girl? And right, what I'm dealing with right now is that, you know, teachers or other people will be like, hey, boys and girls. And they're like, well, you know, not quite sure where to go with that. You mm-hmm. know, for, for bathrooms, um, they 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 don't know whether to go to a boy or a girl's restroom. They just go to whichever restroom has a shorter line because yeah. it doesn't make sense to them. So I think just more education all around um, that that we exist. There, uh, we're diverse in our experiences. We're not just all gay or lesbian, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Can I, so, but you're, you're, are you talking about your, your six-year-old twins? My six-year-old twins, yes. So, um, I mean, that's so young. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like, I don't, well, I don't in- remember last week, but I, ca- I, I don't remember being that young and being so aware, right, of, of these things or really aware of my surroundings. And I think maybe, maybe today's kids are different from when we were kids, or from I was a kid, which was a much longer time ago. Um, But is it like, is it something that they, uh, is it something you talk about as a family or? uh, So with the pandemic, um, my kids actually have, they just stayed at home. So for until they were five, Mm. là nó không cảm thấy là nó con, là con trai nó cũng không cảm thấy nó là, nó là con gái vậy thì mm. nó là gì right mm. um, one of them actually had a conversation with me last night and stumped me so maybe someone can help me here mm. so um, they're like so one of them was like I don't really identify with either you know and so I was trying to probe like so you, like you just are you like a gender not a gender like gender doesn't matter non-binary just neither male or female they're like how about you mom um, why do you identify as a woman and I'm like 
I don't know. Oh, I'm like, I guess I like to, like, I like to yin, right? I like to put <laughs> my dresses and my high heels and stuff like that. And then they go, men can wear dresses. And I'm like, true. Okay. They're like, mm. so why don't you identify as a man? I'm like, um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right. So, right. so for them, the idea of gender is just so ludicrous. Um, and so they don't want to, they don't want to subscribe to it. Mm. Uh, gender thing big. Le, le... That's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Zaitun. Right. So, oh. so their gender exp expense expansive, which is uh, non-binary non would be and then um, a gender would be wow okay you know we have something that maybe you can help go through this because I think that this explains a lot in a very kind of simple way that might be a little bit easier for people who don't understand to try and understand um, would you mind going through this I mean, there's a lot there, but James, are you doing this with me, or uh... <laughs> I can assist you? But <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay. So that's that. Then uh, you is just queer, right? So the first, so we'll go with the person first. Um, uh, bản dạng giới là trong trong đầu óc mình, nó mình nghĩ sao, right? And so I'm trying to find where that is on here. Does that? Do they have that here? So that so. Uh, oh yeah, nhìn, nhìn, nghĩ mình là nữ, nam hay là khác. So in English, that's um, gender identity, right? Mm. How do we identify? Okay. Um, xu hướng tính dục là trái tim mình đó. So let me try that. Cảm thấy hấp dẫn với uh, yêu khác giới, yêu cùng giới, yêu hai giới, right? So yêu khác giới là dị tính, yêu cùng giới là đồng tính, yêu hai giới là song tính. Um, um, so this is who we're attracted to, right? So where our attraction is, I guess who is actually more like orientation, mm -hmm. right? And orientation yeah, sexual is, orientation. yeah, so orientation is actually a combo of like identity and, or this, or identity orientation and also behaviors. Okay. And then we have um, how we appear, thể hiện giới, let me see where that is. Um, thể hiện ra ngoài là nữ tính, nam tính hay là trung tính. Right, so this this actually falls into the binary nữ tính being female identifying nam tính, male identifying and trung tính. Um, What's trung tính? I think that's like phi nhị giới, right? So like just like because trung, trung tính actually translates to like in between, and I don't know if it's in between. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, and so that's that's our gender expression. Expression, yeah, gender expression. Thank you. And then zetin sin hop is essentially like your, your parts, right? Like the, so how the you were born, assigned, the sex that was assigned to you at birth, right? uh -huh. and so um, that may or may not match up with your gender identity. And then sinja bikote nu nam hala lian zetin, and that's intersex, where you have um, genitalia of both, both sexes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And these things may or may not match up between these different things. So tính sinh học and bản dạng giới and xu hướng tính dục and thể hiện giới. Okay, so then uh, does that mean that là trong đầu mình nghĩ, um, right, là khác and then uh, what you were born with may be different. Yes. Hoặc là, hoặc là um, who you love, right, the romantic feelings would be different from so it could be all different right yeah yeah and actually the the uh um in english sometimes people separate it into two types of attraction sexual attraction and romantic attraction right um so for example someone might be say homo romantic like they they are romantically attracted to people of the same gender but they might be asexual like they just don't have any need for se sex or any desire innate desire for like a sexual experience or relationship hmm. mm -hmm. interesting okay um i, I want to just show some comments that we've had from um some of our viewers men come out bằng cách uh, như thế này bố hỏi là khi nào lấy vợ mình trả lời rằng con chỉ thích lấy chồng and the dad was quiet 
<laughs> and sometimes I wonder how many people have to use humor in a situation like this to kind of soften the blow because you know it might be shocking to them, right? Um, but so thank you for, for sharing that with us. Um, Accepting who they are, we can't even change ourselves, much less change others. Only when people feel like heard and understood, then they feel loved. That's true. That's very true. Which is why it's so important when James was talking about like choosing who to be with. Like you can actually choose your family. You can choose somebody to be your family. They might not be the family you grew up with, right? They might not be the mom and dad uh, who gave birth to you, but there's so much value in having that kind of support. Re like really, really uh, important. Whew. People are really enjoying this. I yeah, I, I'm I, really I, like pleasantly yeah. surprised. Quý vị biết không khi hai người bạn trẻ này đồng ý là lên để nói về cái 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 the topic này đó, là maybe they were a little nervous they vì không biết là because you're just opening it up to the public right you don't know who you're talking to you don't know who's listening um and it's so nice isn't it to see like people get it like it's lovely all right um yes she has six-year-old twins she's superwoman by the way anyone who's a parent knows that um do you have advice for parents or family members who suspect that maybe their loved one uh, is homosexual or bisexual or whatever, but that person's not ready to talk about it? Can they help? I think, you know, definitely let like I would have preferred if I had come out on my own terms or just like not even come out. Like I really appreciate what Jitu said about people share who they are in different ways. I'll use sharing instead of like coming out so that it's not like this big spectacle. Um, but just like make it, being more inclusive in your language. Like um, I have a friend who I think suspects that um his brother is gay and so one time he brought his um other queer friend and said oh like th my friend is queer like being very obvious about it um so you know it's like like those type of things where you kind of drop hints that you would be supportive because i think sometimes it's so easy you know we live in a society where there's so much discrimination against lgbtq people not just interpersonally like between people but uh structurally different policies um like the bathroom thing that jitu was talking about or even just um marriage equality marriage. Yeah. yeah uh you know so many different ways that lgbtq people are discriminated that it's hard to believe sometimes that someone is supportive and so i think showing that you're supportive not being like super <laughs> annoying about it but just like dropping hints here and there that um you're ready to to like have that person share that part of themselves uh, not force them though i think forcing someone is you know it really goes against their wishes and i would never wish that on someone mm -hmm. Could, so you're like just kind of opening the door mm -hmm. right you're just opening the door if they want to walk through it they walk through it but you can't push anybody yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Thu, do you have any I, I other? Can, yeah, I completely agree. Um, uh, you know, uh, the person who is queer may be going through their own things and they may not be ready. So I wouldn't um, impose anything on them. Just let them be when they're ready. They'll share when they feel safe and comfortable. They'll share. Um, I think be if you suspect, I think dropping hints like, you know, I love you. Like, no matter what, I love you. Um and doing things that might, because because as we're sharing about ourselves, right? Um, I think the term that we also like besides coming out is letting in, right? People that we choose to let in, um, we try to look for safety cues, 
right? And so if I, I'm like, oh, this person has a pride flag on, maybe that person would be safe for me to share with. Or like James says, you know, this person has a queer friend, maybe that person might be safe for me to care, you know, talk to. Or if this person is not constantly asking me if I have a boyfriend, you know, again, this person might be safe for me to talk to. So I think just being there, um, affirm, reaffirming your love and acceptance and probably um, sharing safety cues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I wonder what it's like in Vietnam. Um, you know, we talk about the conservative culture the, that, that, that the, the Vietnamese are, but there are things I've heard of where I sometimes think, especially like in the big cities in Vietnam, I feel like they're actually more accepting or more um, advanced than some of the Vietnamese communities here. Uh, and I, I would be interested to hear, I don't know if either of you know, but I'd be interested to hear the bên bên Việt Nam nhất là trong thành phố, you know, là how, what do they think? Like, is there a community, right? Is there a community of, of um, the Vietnamese who are open, who feel safe, who, you know, uh, I would love to know that. Do either of you know? I remember uh, when I was, living in Vietnam for a year, um, I was in Hanoi and um, in the summer they had a pride event. It was their fourth pride. It was in oh. 20, 2015. Um, and there's this like parade of people in rainbow bikes. Um, it was very colorful. There was a concert. Um, wow. I forgot what the slogan was. It was a really cool slogan too. <laughs> um, but I was really surprised, you know, I think in Hanoi, in, in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City, whatever you want to call it, um, I, I, I definitely sensed a lot more like social progressiveness yeah. with, when it came to LGBTQ. But when I was living in like Dong Hai in Guang Binh, like in the central region, um, and I was teaching there, I didn't really let anyone know because I, I in the more rural part I wasn't sure right uh, but in the cities there were like uh like I went to gay clubs and bars um and I saw that someone in the comment talked about how in Vietnam there are tv programs where people like come out very publicly and sometimes my parents will send me video clips of those <laughs> uh, um and so I I, I feel like there's a lot more like progression than I thought. Mm -hmm. um, my wife's family, almost all of her extended family, her relatives are in Vietnam and they're, her family are completely accepting of us and our children. Mm -hmm. um, the times that we've visited there, they've been very nice to me. Um, and I, you know, when I was there, I also saw like, you know, people, same gender people walking around holding hands. Um, but having never lived there, just visiting, um, I, I actually don't know how it would compare to the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from uh, one of the viewers. Uh, it's directed towards Thu. Do you think your homosexual lifestyle affects uh, your children's sexual orientation? Um, first off, I want to address the term lifestyle. Um, so <laughs> actually, I'm going to turn it to James because I think James is better at this. Will you address the lifestyle and I'll address the question? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> um, so lifestyle uh, is, I think I would really discourage using that word to describe anyone who's part of the LGBTQ community because lifestyle, like I'm a public health researcher. Lifestyle is like how you eat, your diet, exercise, you know, things like that. Um, it's things you choose to do, how you live your, um, like your daily habits of life. Um, but LGBTQ, like this is a core part of our identity. It's who we are. And so when we say lifestyle, it makes it seem like it's like a choice anyone can just make willy nilly. And maybe some, for some people it is a choice. Um, but I think for like me and many people I know, it's just who we are. Um, and so I, lifestyle can be offensive sometimes. Okay. And so you, you suggest instead of saying the word lifestyle, because I don't think that people mean to offend it, mm -hmm. you know, it could be offensive to someone else. Um, but like orientation, is, is that a better word to be using other than lifestyle, right? Yeah. Orientation, orientation. 
identity identity uh-huh. yeah exactly okay yeah. Okay, and then Thu, now now you can address the rest of the question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, James, for that. Um, I also want to clarify that I'm not homosexual. Um, and it's also not, as James said, it's just part of who I am. So I remember like in junior high, right, with my Viet female friends, they're, they'd be like, oh, you know, would you just date Asian guys or guys of other race? And I'm like, yeah, I date guys of other race, like why limit it to Asian guys and, and why limit it to guys? I'll, I date other genders too. And that's just, that's just how I thought. Like at that time, I've never had a crush on a woman. Um, I've, I, I, I didn't ever thought about my sexual orientation. That was just how, that's just how I felt. That's how I thought. Like, why are we limiting ourselves to gender? Like why, like why does gender play such a big role in attraction? Um, and so for me, so, so to answer that part, right? So, um, I I think I I see people, and I don't I guess focus on gender when it comes to attraction. Okay? Um, for my kids, they're six. I don't think they have a sexual orientation yet, or one that they know of. Um, right now, it's really just their gender identity, and and that's also changing. And gender identity is fluid; it can change. It can change. Uh, while your kids, it can change as adults. Um, and I think at this time, where they are in their, this, their developmental stage, they're exploring. They're, you know, the questions that they're asking me about, well, what is gender and why do you identify a certain way? And I don't really feel a certain way. That may change. They are, these questions might lead to them remaining non-binary or agender or them possibly choosing um, a binary gender. Okay. I think um, our environment, our home environment is very open and tolerant and supportive. And so they feel comfortable sharing these things. Um, I think that there may be gender expansive kids. There are. <laughs> there are gender expansive kids in other households. Um, and they may not feel comfortable sharing. Mm-hmm. And it's something that is talked about in my family. And so they're very comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, I, I want to show this comment because, uh, and I, I thank you, I, th- I thank the person who's making the comment because it's very honest, right? It's very honest. Tại sao nhìn hai người lesbians có vẻ dễ hơn um, hai người gay? Mà cái đó không có phải là người Việt mình thôi, nhưng mà kể cả everybody, người Mỹ cũng vậy thôi. Okay, there's a social stigma against two men being together. Nhưng mà when you're not even talking about lesbians, but just uh, socially, people are more used to females showing affection. So, you know, people don't think twice when they see uh, women kissing each other when they meet. Women hugging each other when they meet, right? Just being affectionate. Và cái đó không phải là người Việt thôi, nhưng mà everybody, everyone has that. Um, Do either of you have a thought on, on why it's, you know, easier to see two women together versus two men? So earlier I shared the research example of, because we have very strict ideas of what men are like. Um, I'm also going to put myself out there and say that um, hetero men have fantasies about women being together. And so it's actually oh, yeah. something that they enjoy seeing and it's not as taboo. Right. Yep. I'd also add... Um, there's this concept called precarious sexuality uh, where specifically for uh, heterosexual men, like it's such a privileged uh, identity, uh, but it's so easily lost too. Um, And because it's so easily lost, there are such rigid norms about how to be a heterosexual man. And so when that is in trouble, it's so much harder to see it because it's so baked into our society right like we really uh the structures we have the policies we have they really privilege heterosexual men Um, and so whenever that is in trouble it's like a big scandal yep when you when you confuse people that's when they get scared and when people get scared right that's when all the ugly stuff comes out Mm -hmm. honestly um i i I don't know what this uh Right, the whole thing about con- con- cont- being contagious—it's—it's it's along the same lines as like when James came out and 
And dad was like, do you need to go cần đi bác sĩ không? And and they're not saying it to be disrespectful because they don't understand, right? There are still a number of people who believe it's a sickness or believe it can be cured somehow, right? And not just Vietnamese. I mean, look at all the, um, what do they call it? Gay conversion, conversion uh, right? Therapy. Conver yeah. Conversion therapy. Conversion um, therapy. And it's so very tied to religion. So when Thu said that her her family is very Catholic and that was her main concern, totally get it. Um, so, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see another comment here. What can be done to overcome the prejudice and discrimination Uh, that gay men, lesbians, and bisexuals experience. Oh, and there's more. Like that list is a longer every day. Uh, but thank you for the question. W what do you think can be done? So I mentioned it a little earlier. So I think at the individual level, so learn, learn more, right? There's lots of information out there. Um, so I'll, I'll use myself as, as an example. Um, many, several years ago, I encountered the first non-binary person I've ever met. And I was just like, whoa, like I, I, I stumbled over pronoun use. And I'm just like, I don't know much about this. I don't know much about this information. I went through workshops. I read as much as I can. And um, and that has helped a lot. And then when just this past year, my kids are like, I think I'm non-binary. I'm like, oh, okay, good thing I did this research, right? I have, I have a little information that I can draw from. And so that information is out there. It's out there in Thingvi, it's out there in English. And so that if, if you can take it upon yourself, right? It's not just on us as people who are part of the LGBTQ community to educate you, but on yourself to look up that information that will help all of us. Mm -hmm. um, interpersonally, again, using language that's inclusive, saying stuff instead of you guys, but like you all, you folks. Um, not assuming that everyone's male or female, not assuming that every woman has a male partner and every man has a female partner. Um, if, if people are making um, jokes about gay people um, or other people of the LGBTQ community to, to call them out, right? And it happens like little by little like that, right? Don't let those things pass, uh, like, you know, slide, actually say something. And then at a much larger level in terms of our voting behaviors, right? Voting to um, protect the rights of LGBTQ people. There are many states where you can still get fired for being queer or trans. Um, bathroom laws um, are, you know, are out there in many, many states. Um, and so there's a lot that we can do. Yeah. Um, and, and that may be the most effective way for change because I think sometimes um, people don't think of situations. For instance, if you live in a state where there is no um, same-sex marriage and your partner, and it could have been your partner for 30 years, gets into an accident and you want to go and visit them in the hospital, you mm -hmm. can't because you're not a legal uh, spouse, right? And then how about insurance? Like, what have you been together for? And, and really, and, and I'm using the example because it is an example that the rest of us can understand. But if you have a spouse and your spouse works and let's say you stay home and you've got kids, what about insurance for your family? You know, things like that, that that maybe people don't think about because the first thing that people think about is sex. And this isn't about sex. It's not about sex. It's not about what people do in their bedroom. And we have to get over that because I think that's the sticking point where people are so uncomfortable because they're thinking about sex and sex makes everyone so uncomfortable, right? Yingma, it's not about sex. So this is really about families. So if you have a, a, a spouse or a, a partner who's the same sex and you have kids, how do you protect them? How do you take care of them? Okay, so... Can I add to that? Yeah, sure. So um, my wife and I were married when uh, we had our first child. But again, because they, the laws are not the same across states, um, she, and I'm the biological mom, she had to actually go through adoption papers. We had to go to court, 
for her to adopt our children mm -hmm. so that if we were let's say the we're flying from one from here to new york and the plane had to do a crash an la uh, emergency landing in some state that if something were to happen to us in that state she would still have rights right. as a parent wow. to our children wow yeah and then not not to further confuse things but I have a podcast where I talk to people who take part in all different types of relationships. And, you know, for them, it's another thing where the people who are polyamorous, who can love more than one person at a time, who, you know, you may, th these triads where you, you may have someone you call your husband and then you also have a female partner as well. And you're all kind of together in this family. And I think that people who are unfamiliar with that kind of stuff, first thing they think of is, oh, my God, that's like wild sex. No, it's a family. And they will run into situations where it's very difficult for them to care for each other um, because the laws don't allow it. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important. You know, no one's asking for your permission to do stuff behind closed doors. So this is not about sex. And if you get so uncomfortable and in your head you start thinking things about, oh, two guys doing this or two girls, then you're thinking about the wrong thing, right? Then you're thinking about the wrong thing. Um, so everything that we're covering, again, not about sex. It's about so much more than that. So it's really important. And I, I love that you guys are out there talking about this and sharing your experiences. Can either of you um, type in the chat, uh, is there a resource that you think is good? Or maybe for VROC, is there, can you put in the um, chat and I'll put it up on the screen. For anyone who wants to know more, um, who, who maybe needs some support or who you know someone who might be, who this might be beneficial for, um, so that we can um, share the link and how people can get get in touch with with VROC. Um, all right. And by the way, I, I have to say this because I've talked to so many people on, on my other podcast about this. When you're talking about like, Christianity and things that go against religious teachings, like like you don't have to. Um, oh, you guys. Okay, hold on a second. They, you guys did it in the uh, private chat. Oh, I don't think it, we have access to the public one. Oh, okay. So here it is. Here's one. So it's vietrock.org. Okay, so I, please, yeah. I also want to comment on the Christianity Catholicism part. Please. Uh, Catholics don't actually, uh, the Pope doesn't actually see being gay as a sin. So there's a lot of misinformation around that too. Um, and for those of you in Orange County, um, when I was struggling with both my religion and my sexual orientation, there is a Catholic church that is part of like the Catholic system in Long Beach that is very queer friendly. Um, nice. Yeah. So there, there are options. Yes. Um, and my whole point before I got distracted about the, uh, the here, and there's also a, an, an Instagram, right? An Instagram page that you can go to. Or Viet, what is this? Viet train? Oh, Viet Rainbow. Oh, Viet Rainbow. <laughs> Viet Rainbow OC. Okay, Viet Rainbow OC. Uh, that's easy to remember. So those two things are are, are two um, resources that you can go to uh, and learn some more and maybe connect with other people. Uh, but I have uh, talked to people who grew up very, very conservative in a very religious family like Mormons some of them had to leave the church to be able to live their life and some of them say no uh, you know you can leave the church without leaving God like if they won't accept you there that's you know, it's just just a, a building find someone else find another community like God still loves you you know the, the people who who are not being accepting, they're not God. They're not the religion that you need to run away from. Uh, so I think it's really important that, again, you just, you find people, you find the support. Um, 
That is really, really important. All right. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. James, oh. Lou, thank you so much for, for being so open and, and talking about this. Um, again, that's uh, Viet Rainbow OC on Instagram, Viet Rainbow OC, and then vietrock.org. And that stands for what now? Same thing, Viet Rainbow of OC. <laughs> oh, Viet, okay. We should probably make them the same. <laughs> okay, well, you had to shorten it. That's why. Uh, so that's very incredible. So I hope I hope you enjoyed the the conversation tonight. It's an important one. It's an important one. I'm glad we had it. Uh, and I don't care how serious the um, the the conversation is. One thing that we always do on here before we end it is is we play a little music and we just relax, get a little funky. James Huynh. Angela Thuwin, lovely people. I love you. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Thank you for being the voice out there. I appreciate you. And maybe we'll have you on. Like, did you enjoy talking? Was it good? Yes. I had a lot of fun. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much to you and all the listeners, <laughs> watchers. They they are appreciating it. And uh, I can see us coming on talking about other things because there's never, never a shortage of <laughs> things to talk about when it comes to this stuff. Thank you both. Have a great evening, everyone. We'll see you next time.